I just got back from a region known as Matawaska Valley in Renfrew County, about three hours north of me. It is located on the southern edge of Algonquin Park. Several reports have come out of that park, including an encounter I had back in 2008. I had a different experience with three of my other friends in that same park, which involved rock throwing, odor, and even feces found. My family and I rented a cottage this week on a small private lake called Spectacle Lake. The cottage is surrounded by forest and the region has a good population of moose, deer, wolf, beaver, and even bear. On Monday, July 27th, when we arrived at 1500 hours, we got unpacked and got settled in for the afternoon. At 1800 hours, we had a nice dinner and then sat around a big bonfire at approximately 20 hours. At about 22, while sitting and talking around the fire, I heard something across the lake in the distance. I told everybody to be quiet because I could hear something above the sound of our fire. I then heard these series of howls come from across the lake. The distance across the lake is about 500 meters. The area has thick forest with cliffs in the background. The howls seem to come well beyond the distance across the lake and even beyond the cliffs behind the tree line. I would estimate the cliffs to be approximately 150 meters high. There are no cottages directly across the lake. There are three small cottages at a distance to the north of us. However, no one was at those cottages during the week. Having heard these kind of sounds before, I figured it was a Sasquatch, since I'm a stranger to that. But nobody else in my group has experienced this before. And naturally, they were all taken back and quite excited. Everybody agreed the howls did not sound like wolves, coyotes, loons, deer, moose, or any other kind of animal that we are familiar with. These howls went on intermittently for about a half an hour each, and there were about three to four howls each time. About midnight, the fire was dying down, and we all headed into the cottage for the night. But just before going in, we heard a large branch break close by. I would estimate about 20 feet from the cottage in the tree line, and it was a clear distinct crack of a tree limb. I would estimate the tree limb to be about one inch or more. Again, I knew what this was, having experienced this many times, and so I tried to peer into the tree line to see if I could see anything. I heard nothing else and saw nothing. I didn't want to shine a flashlight because I knew this might end the activity for the night, so I just went inside the cottage. We all went to bed shortly afterwards. At 3.30 in the morning, I looked at the time immediately. Something hit or threw something at the cottage very, very hard. It shook the entire cottage and woke all of us up. Keep in mind that this is a fairly large cottage that is two stories tall with a basement walkout and sleeps all eight of us very well. I knew what was happening and got up to look around. I wanted to rule out any of the kids or dogs possibly walking around and maybe knocked something off of a shelf in the dark. So I walked all around the house from top to bottom. Everybody, including the dogs, were in their beds. The dogs never moved from their spots, even though I know they heard and felt the bang. I looked outside and saw nothing in the pitch black darkness, so I just went back to bed. I laid there awake and listened for any other activity. Then, about a half hour later, I could hear something mumbling or grumbling outside the open window. That's the best way I know how to describe it. It was close to my window, but I still could not see anything when I looked out. I did not want to shine a light hoping for more activity. At 4.15 in the morning, something gave a long, hard, scrape sound along the outside of the cottage. Then, nothing. In the morning at 6.30 a.m., I woke up and checked the outside perimeter of the cottage and the surrounding area. The ground is hard all around the cottage, so I found no imprints. 
I went inside the tree line, but still could not find no definitive prints. I could see no handprints or signs of damage on the outside walls. I could not find the tree break. I could not see any rocks or sticks lying close to the cottage that could have been thrown. I also found no physical signs of the scrape either. The next night, Tuesday, July 28th, while sitting by our bonfire again, we heard the same screams and howl from across the lake. This would occur off and on until about five in the morning. There was no more activity of any kind on Wednesday or Thursday, but I heard these screams and howls again on Friday, July 31st, during the night. And there were eight witnesses of us in total, either sitting by the campfire and in the cottage. The chances of somebody being out here and trying to play a trick on us is pretty minimal. The area itself is heavily forested on all sides for hundreds and hundreds of miles. This is all Canadian shield type landscape around the water's edge. It is a very hilly region in the Madawaska Valley with tall, visible rock cliffs and even some swamps. Wildlife is abundant, such as bear, wolves, coyotes, deer, moose, beaver, and other small game and plenty of fish. First backpacking campsite on the Western Uplands Backpacking Trail, Rain Lake, Algonquin Provincial Park, Ontario, Canada. I was lying in my tent, about to fall asleep, when the forest around me went dead quiet. It was an uneasy feeling. Then I felt an enormous thud on the ground. The thud was totally silent and did not disturb my sleeping son. I thought that the thud was my heart giving out as it was followed by arrhythmia and I was praying that this was not the time or the place for me to have a heart attack. I then thought I smelt a skunk smell, but when I breathed in deeper, a second breath, I smelt nothing. The forest remained calm and I listened intently, thinking we were visited by a bear. The next morning, my son and I did some testing as it is possible to feel vibrations from walking on the thin soil overlaying the shield rock, which sounds like hollow ground when walking upon it. We determined that whatever it was had to have been within four feet of the tent. We could not reproduce the amplitude of the thud. We did, however, discover where the animal came down from the trail into the campsite and determined that neither of us had walked that way that night. We also believed that a 400 pound bear could not have produced a thud unless it jumped. I thought that it felt more like a thousand pound moose, but could not explain why a moose would come that close to a designated campsite. I also thought I heard a loon hooting later that night, but the hoot did not just sound right as it was more of a whoop than a hoot and much, much louder. There was a tree about eight inches in diameter that had been snapped off at about two feet above the ground and was there when we arrived in camp. The splinters were fresh on the ground and not covered by other forest debris, such as pine needles and nearby ground conditions. The tree had been snapped off. I noticed this as I cut the splinted end off the stump for firewood in the morning. It had not been chopped down or cut down. It was just a stump. I did not think anything of it at the time. A dead tree blown down in the woods. But in retrospect, it was fresh. No debris on the stump, which begs the question, where was the fallen tree? Surely somebody could have burned it up all that day. There was not enough fresh ash in the fire pit when we arrived. And also, who cuts up a fallen tree and hauls the whole thing off for firewood? I'm not even so sure that the tree was in that condition when I first surveyed the site, after having went forward to survey the second site and return the first. I didn't notice until after my son and I were both off site for some time, hanging in the bear bags. Finally, earlier that night while preparing for bed, I asked my son several times, what? Thinking he was talking to me, but not understanding him. But he said that he said nothing. Listen, I've been in bear country before and had to chase one off before, 
but there when my son was seven, not twelve, which is now, and took my daughter, who's sixteen months old, last week. But I can honestly say that this was the most scared that I have ever been. If it was a Sasquatch, or whatever they are called, I think I know why they are unhappy with our presence. I tested a bear banger flare at the bridge, just to make sure there was one in working order. The wind caught the flare and blew it into a tree. Stupid me. It was embarrassing, having to tell my son to wait on the trail while I investigated to make sure my idiot moment didn't catch the forest on fire. How careless of me. Anybody having observed this stunt would have judged me for a rookie and wouldn't want me camping near them. And, well, I am, when it comes to backpacking. I have done wilderness canoe camping in areas like this dozens of times through. The place was littered with moose and bear sign, with many bear footprints that seemed large and elongated, more so than what I am used to seeing. Everything was not adding up, and decided to hike out, giving up on the last seven days of our adventure. While walking out, I had the feeling of being watched, and even noticed something large in the bushes about 40 meters away. Upon investigating and finding nothing, I just assumed it was an overactive imagination. But the more I think, the more things begin to add up in my mind. <laughs>